The Mario Kart series is pretty varied in terms of the tracks it's gotten over the years. From the fan favorites like Waluigi Pinball and Coconut Mall, to tracks that some may consider to be underrated like Rosalina's Ice World and Superbell Subway, to name a few. But if there is one thing that many don't often take their time to look at and discuss, it would be the circuit tracks in the series. I mean, they sure are the definition of a basic course in Mario Kart alright, and most of them aren't anything to write home about. But sometimes these types of tracks do get brought up, whether it's for the right or wrong reasons. And I couldn't help but wonder, what's the best circuit track in the series proper? While the answer is pretty subjective, I mean who's gonna actually take their time to actually rank the series most basic of course themes? I've tackled this ridiculous task last year, and needless to say, I've made some questionable choices with some of the course placements. Now that a year has passed, I'm back to cover them once again, and this time, I'm doing it properly instead of just placing them all over due to fatigue from recording so much footage. But how will I handle this? What rules are needed in order for this list to make sense? Well, I'll tell you the rules right now. Firstly, I've previously excluded both the GBA remix of Super Mario Kart courses and Taurus Remix due to either little to no changes made aside from the graphics and such. Since then, Tor has actually gotten a few circuits for itself that didn't return for the Boosted Course Pass. Because of this, I'm going to include the remix this time. I also might as well include the GBA remix too for the hell of it, so hey, at least they'll be acknowledged. That being said, some courses are going to be handled in different ways. While most of them may end up in a single pack of 3 or 4, Others might end up being placed in further spots apart. Keep that in mind in case you're confused as to why a remake of a track is placed 15 spots apart from the original. Secondly, I might need to clarify what's considered a circuit track and what isn't. Essentially, if a track clearly says circuit in the name or is called circuit in those regions, then I'm going to count it as such. And just to make this a bit easier for myself and you guys, I'm only going to be looking at the PAL in Japanese regions. I could go ahead and include Tokyo Blur since it's called Tokyo Circuit in Spanish, but that would be a complete nightmare. Also, it's largest city track, so you know. Lastly, this is all just my personal opinion, though I'd be shocked if anyone takes this seriously enough. I mean, it's still a ranking about circuit tracks, so it's not that deep. With all the rules laid out, let's go ahead and not start just yet, because I need to address a certain track that I've gotten comments of. <laughs> I've been getting comments about this track ever since I released my original video last year, and I figured it would be appropriate to discuss it now. Amongst all the debates I've seen in Mario Kart, one of those that I didn't really expect to see a debate of is whether or not Mario Kart Stadium is a circuit track or not. Certainly a debate to be sure, but I wanted to take a deeper dive and see if Mario Kart Stadium is considered a circuit track in any other region, in case I didn't pull a Royal Raceway from last year. Alright, let's see here. Um. I don't see a circuit named anywhere else, so there we go. Even though Mario Kart Stadium has all the elements for a circuit track, it isn't classified as such in any other region and therefore won't be included for that. However, just because I'm not about to deal with more comments telling me that I'm wrong or whatever, if this were to be ranked as a circuit, then I'd probably place it in high C to low B. The track itself is pretty fine, with an inviting music that fits the opening moniker, the lively atmosphere with the audience and all, and I do suppose it does a decent enough job in introducing the anti-gravity mechanic. Not much to say, but there you go. Now let's really get started with the worst track. I sure do wonder what it is. Wow, what a shocker. Figure 8 Circuit is in last place? Holy crap, what a revelation. Being serious here, this is a sad excuse of not only a circuit track, but also a beginner one as well. Whereas most would have at least something going on, be it the unique overlapping of GC and Luigi Circuit, or even the one shortcut that SNES Mario Circuit 1 has, but figure 8 circuit? Nothing. There's no shortcuts, no obstacles, although a couple of these tracks don't have obstacles so it really doesn't hold up that strongly. The layout is literally what the name of the course says, hell the name itself doesn't even have a character corresponding to it. It's truly astounding just how much little effort there is to this one track, to the point where you had to consider, was this like a weird test course that Nintendo just decided to put into the base roster? I'm stretching it here, but you know what I mean. There isn't a lot for me to praise for it either, though I will admit that the Super Mario Bros. 3 blocks does add a small bit of weird charm, and the music is really good as well. 
one of my favorite circuit themes in the series. Although, considering that there is another track that shares the same theme while also being more interesting, I'd rather associate it with that instead. Figure 8 Circuit is just nothing special with a really basic atmosphere, dull layout, a lack of shortcuts or obstacles, just a really boring experience that doesn't give me any emotion other than boredom. And I somehow roll my eyes every time I see a comment that's like, Ooh, this track should have been in Mario Kart 8 because of the 8. Shut the fuck up. You know, Luigi's Circuit is a pretty impressive track for it being the introductory course in Double Dash. I sure hope nothing ruins it in the future. Oh. Oh no. It's no secret that Double Dash's courses have suffered the hardest in terms of how they were handled in DS, and I don't necessarily blame the devs for it. The DS is less powerful than the GameCube, so a lot of track elements were removed in order for the game to run smoothly. Still, things like Baby Park having 5 laps instead of 7, and the bridge being inaccessible in Mushroom Bridge were buzzkills. So, someone please tell me what went wrong with Luigi's Circuit? For whatever reason, the whole track has been upscaled greatly, meaning that for a majority of the race, you'll be driving on a mostly empty road with you hardly seeing any racers driving towards you, if at all. And since Mario Kart DS's items are far less chaotic than Double Dash, it ultimately leads to a pretty uneventful and boring experience. There are other things to note such as the more empty atmosphere and some routes being removed, but that's something I'm not overly concerned about. Otherwise said, yeah, Luigi's Circuit isn't exactly the most exciting track in its DS remake, but at least it's not figure 8, I... guess? Mario Circuit 3 my old enemy. I've made it no secret in the past that I'm not particularly fond of this iteration of the four SNES circuits. In fact, I'd go as far as to say it's my least favorite out of that group. Yes, even worse than one. I guess to give it some credit, it's a little more challenging, but in a game where the controls are as rough as rocks, it becomes a lot more frustrating than anything, if not just boring with basic visuals and a somewhat catchy tune that anyone can recognize. That said, you might have noticed that it only has three of them ranked here and not the other two. To put it simply, the other iterations of SNES Mario Circuit 3 just have better control to them, but for these three, I'm not feeling it as much, with the GBA version being worse for its reuse of base game assets, and Taurus version having decent, yet not great visuals and control. Whichever placement they're in doesn't concern me, as at the end of the day, it's just Mario Circuit 3. Why should I care as much? Of all the circuit tracks here, this is the most nothing feeling one I've ever felt. While it's not the absolute worst super circuit track, GBA Mario Circuit just doesn't have that strong of an identity for me to remember it all that much. The layout is fairly okay at most, and I do like the little pit stop near the end, but nothing about this track really screams… Mario. Somehow more so than the SNES tracks because at least they have some odd charm to them. Here it's just a grass field with a forest in the background. The only reason people even remember this track is because of its Mario Kart 8 remake, which we'll get to soon. Overall though, this is just a very generic course and I never really remember much off of it. I don't know, what do you want me to say about this one? Let's move on. And we're back to the Super Nintendo, this time focusing on the two remakes of the very first track in the series. At face value, Mario Circuit 1 is a relatively basic track with a few turns and some shortcuts present. However, most of the SNES tracks benefit from having 5 laps since they're all pretty short. Ever since DS, however, their lap counts got cut to 3, and while for some it isn't a big deal, others make an already short track even shorter, and Mario Circuit 1 unfortunately got hit the hardest with it, worse than Tor since it defaults to 2 instead of 3 for the majority of its tracks. I will say that between these two versions, I don't really have a preference since neither have appealing visuals, nor are long enough to give a lasting impression other than, oh, that's it? I guess Diaz gets the edge for having better controls, but is it worth it for ugly visuals? Either way, hopefully after its recent comeback in tour, Mark Circuit 1 can at least catch a brief break since, well, come on, are you really going to prioritize it again? Okay, how the hell did Peach Circuit manage to rank above GBA Mario Circuit if this course lasts shorter than it? Well, it's simple. I actually like the atmosphere for this one more since it has a bit more character with the hills and peach trees. Or orange trees. 
whatever these are. Also, this track somehow has more of an impact for me than Mario Circuit ever did, a far cry from what I called it forgettable a year ago. That said, the shorter legs and easy difficulty is what prevented me from ranking both the GBA and DS versions any higher. Speaking of, I like the more vibrant colors of Super Circuit more, as while the DS version isn't terrible, its darker tones are less appealing, at least in my opinion. It all comes to preference, really, so go with what you like. Mario Kart Wii does sure have a lot of banger tracks, but of course, amongst the greatest of them, we also have some that are just okay. And then there's Luigi Circuit. Mm-hmm. I don't know what happened between Double Dash and here, but the track itself is just really uneventful with only a ramp cut and the outer boost panel turn being the only notable aspect of this, quite frankly, boring track. Wait, no, 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 wait. There's a Luigi statue that turns into a me head. Oh, that's pretty cool. Still, it won't save this track from being placed at D tier. Not much to say here, but in terms of Luigi's older brother... Mario's Circuit has a lot more things going on, and yet it still falls under the lower end of Wii tracks introduced, much like his bro. One look of this track and you think, one, wow, so nostalgic, and two, yep, it's your standard Mario Circuit affair, but to give it some credit, I think the atmosphere is good, the chain time somehow manages to be threatening, and the music itself is also pretty good. Nonetheless, what we have here is a pretty basic semi-figure 8 layout and nothing of note going on beyond the occasional Goomba and seeing how broken wheelies are in this game. Nifty! Neither circuit really has anything to go by for me to prefer one over the other, so let's move on. Luigi's not having a good streak right now, is he? Guys, I promise, things are going to get better for Luigi soon. It's just coincidental that for a lot of his circuit tracks, there's nothing to write home about, and that also goes for his first ever track in Mario Kart 64. The entire experience can only be summed up with this. You spend most of it on these two huge turns with a brief intermission inside this tunnel. That's about it. The original version also has a spiny shell box inside of this hot air balloon that you'll probably never get normally unless you're lucky, so that's neat. Still, Luigi Raceway is just nothing but drifting on these turns, and it also carries over to its remix in both 7 and Tour. Except in 7 onward, they added a completely useless path that only slows you down, and Tour adds in some new Super Mario Bros. hills in the background. That's literally it. Riveting stuff, guys. Of the three tracks, I do like the 3DS version the best since the original is too basic, and the Tour version... Well, I don't know what it is, but the graphics and visual touch-ups just aren't something I'm as big of a fan of. The 3DS version may be an upgraded form of the N64 look, but sometimes less is more, and I really like the way it looks there. Regardless of which version I prefer, I'll still be playing on a pretty long and uneventful track. Come on Luigi, I better see a good track out of you by the time this video ends, or I'm gonna call you the worst Mario character in existence. Why did I put this track as number 4 in my original video? What was I thinking? I'll give this track some credit. It actually took some effort to make it not as bland as figure 8 circuit by adding in some obstacles and a few shortcuts, which I feel is elevated more by the fact that the whole thing is based on a Mobius strip. That's extremely fitting for a game like Mario Kart 8. I will also give it bonus points for you actually hitting the sign. I don't know, that's always been one of the funniest aspects of Mario Kart in recent times, so... I don't know. At the end of the day, it's a more interesting figure 8, but that can only go so far, and there are plenty of other tracks in the list that are more substantial enough than Mario Kart 8's Fit Mario Circuit. I almost called it figure 8, what the hell is my... Figure 8 Circuit Brain Rod is real. I would say more interesting things about it, but come on now, I haven't even mentioned the other two Mario Circuit 1's yet. <laughs> Compared to the original and DS remake, this version of Peach Circuit is a bit more interesting. I mean, yeah, obviously it has the elevation, a brand new look, you know, what you typically expect for a GBA remake, but something about the way it's been handled just seems... off. Like, it doesn't really give off the feel that this is a Peach Circuit. You could argue the castle, sure, but that's been used in Mario Circuit since Double Dash, so it's not really that special anymore. Either way, I wouldn't say this remake is bad, but I wouldn't say I'm impressed with it either. It's just kind of an alright track, you know? 
I'm still convinced this track is like Super Nintendo World incarnated. I, I just, I just can't ignore it. Oh, hey, look, we're back at Mario Circuit 1. Yay. <laughs> you might be a bit confused as to why I ranked these two higher than the DS and Tour remakes. And to answer that, I don't know, they're just perfectly fine in their respective games. Not to mention they have five laps, so the length is much longer. Although the GBA version is weaker due to the aforementioned reuse of assets and lack of obstacles, it's still a pretty mediocre experience. Same goes for the original too. Not much else to say, so moving on. Okay, I guess not, because we also have the last two Mario Circuit 3 iterations to talk about. I am so exhausted. Firstly, given the much better controls of both Wii and 8 Deluxe, these two feel a lot more better to play on compared to the rougher feeling SNES and GBA, as well as the jankiness of Tour. Secondly, they're the best looking ones for Mario Circuit 3 standards, at least to me. Special mentions to 8 Deluxe for adding in a few decorations around to make it just a little more lively. I don't think many people even acknowledge these decorations at all, except for very few. Huh. Despite these strengths, they're still just Mario Circuit 3, and I couldn't care any less for these series of mediocre tracks. Seriously, why are there five versions? In terms of which one is my favorite, I guess we, since 8 Deluxe's graphics are, you know, boosted course past quality, but I don't really care which one is my favorite or not. Let's move on, just so I don't have to talk about these series of tracks anymore. I'm finally free from Mario Circuit 3 Hell! Let's go! Oh, damn it. Another SNES track? No, wait, this one's different. It's remixed now. Eh, it alright. It's not substantial or nuanced. It's kind of lame and a bit underwhelming with the only notable attributes being the floating blocks, Goombas, and view jumps. But it all right. It reminds me of Mario Circuit 2, which I like better, but same circuit nonetheless. If one of you got that reference, then clear me surprised. Also, shout out to Starrymon for this beautiful comment. I have truly learned the error of my ways. That and not putting Wii U Mario Circuit at number four. That one is an actual crime. Toad Circuit? Holy shit, guys, look! It's Toad Circuit! It's literally been the same across all three of its appearances. Wow. I mean, like, Toad Circuit isn't bad in any standard. It's a perfectly fine beginner track with an inviting atmosphere, great music, and a neat lighter part by lap 2. But you can only do so much for it. And there are way better tracks to pick regardless if it's played in a circuit tier or a regular one. In regards to which one I like, I mean, it's obviously the original. It just doesn't look that pleasant in either Tor or 8 Deluxe, and if the 3DS can have more appealing graphics, then that says something. Toad Circuit is definitely one of the tracks ever, and that's all you'll get. I literally cannot be bothered to do a Stray Phyllis reference for this, so, uh, I don't know, imagine it or something. Uh, you know, I'm not your dad. Hey, remember GBA Mario Circuit from a couple of ranks before? Yeah, that one was a bit of a snooze fest. But the remake that it got in Mario Kart 8? Oh man, this one's a notable improvement. Don't get me wrong, it's not like this track is anything extraordinary compared to the rest of this list, but for the most part, it doesn't actually bore me to death. Holy crap! Obviously, the highlight that many point towards with this particular remake is the Ultra Hand U-Turn, and while it is a standout, I can't deny that. Personally speaking, it's just a fancier way of taking one turn, but props nonetheless. Also, this glider ramp off to the side is pretty neat, and hey look, the pit stop is actually a pit stop. That's pretty cute. Again, this trick isn't anything extraordinary, but I still enjoyed my time nonetheless. Congrats, GBA Mario Circuit. You better appreciate it for all you can, because I'm probably going to forget about you in about a second. Mario Raceway is one of the better circuits that we've discussed thus far, and yet I really don't have much to say on it. I've always seen this just kind of... I don't know, mediocre? Not a bad track by any means, it's got a unique look to it and a few shortcuts on its belt. The spinning Mario sign is pretty neat, surprisingly kept it in tour while they added a wall to this hill that basically acts like a wall already, so I don't really get the point here. Of the three versions, I think I'd pick Wii over the original and in tour. I don't know, something about the way it looks and plays just feels right to me. 
I'm really stretching it here, guys, but at least it's not the worst thing I've ever played, so that's cool. Yay! Given that Yoshi's Circuit is one of the most beloved tracks in Mario Kart history, it's almost no surprise that this Double Dash course came back three more times. Of those, I do think that the Tour and especially DS versions are its weakest iterations. Yet despite them being the weakest, I still found some enjoyment with them. I say this because for its first time coming back in Mario Kart DS, I think it's a solid interpretation. It's not perfect of course, I mean it's less lively than the original, the tunnel shortcut is removed for some reason, and the Plant Boys are now just having a day off. Not to mention how ridiculous it is for this to be the final track overall in DS, but otherwise said, it's not that bad of a track. Now the tour version on the other hand is a bit different, seeing as it takes the Mario Kart 8 appearance instead. That version plays almost the same as it, albeit with a few minor adjustments like this part with the prana plants and flowers, although I can't forgive it considering that it has to accommodate for tour's controls, and for some reason they added a bunch of cutouts in the shortcut. Why they have the need to do it? Well, your guess is as good as mine. What I can't forgive though, is this sign. You might not think much of it up until now, but it just looks wrong. If you don't believe me, look. I apologize if you can't unsee it now. But regardless, despite being the weakest iterations, Yoshi's Circuit is still a serviceable track in both DS and Tour, and I still have some fun playing with these two. It's just more obvious that I prefer the original 8 versions, and don't worry, we'll get to them pretty soon. Also, I don't know if you guys noticed, but the layout of this track is in the shape of, um, um, hold on, it's familiar to me, it's, uh, is that, is that Mauser? Rarely does a beginner track leave a lasting impression that doesn't wind up being, oh, that's certainly a track alright, but when it occurs, you definitely think about it in the best light, and GCN's Luigi's Surrogate is one such exception. It may look like a basic track in layout, which it is, but the one aspect about it that makes it so special is that these roads aren't blocked off, at least in 150cc and beyond, which causes you to run often into items being dropped, as well as the racers themselves on occasion. Combine this with the excellent circuit theme, and charming atmosphere with Luigi's B-Rank Mansion at the background as well as a blimp, GC and Luigi's Circuit stands above all as one of the best beginner tracks in the Mario Kart series. In terms of circuit status, there's simply other tracks that are far better than it, but you can't deny that the chaotic nature of this simple circuit shows players of what's to come in Double Dash. Once upon a time, I was excited to play the elusive Mario Circuit 4 seeing as it never came back to any Mario Kart game aside from Super Circuit. First time playing, it was a little underwhelming, but not bad. Then playing the GBA version and oh my god, this track actually sucks. That means the GOG also sucks. Holy shit, this opened my eyes. I was stuck with this mindset for at least a year or two until I decided to replay every Super Mario Kart track again. And when I got to Mario Circuit 4, I expected to not like it again. But somehow, I didn't. In fact, I started to like playing Mario Circuit 4. The track itself is really just a weirdly mirrored Mario Circuit 3 with slight alterations, but that somehow made the experience a lot better and a bit less frustrating as a result. Who knew that the only way to make Mario Circuit 3 more enjoyable is to do this? As for the culprit that started this false hatred, it's also good, but definitely not in the same league as the original. Are you surprised by that? However you see it, Mario Circuit 4 is definitely one of the better SNES tracks with its gameplay, and I hope to see it make its eventual comeback in a future Mario Kart game. But come on, let's be real here, we all know what the best SNES Mario Circuit is. Can it really be anything else? It's SNES Mario Circuit 2. Getting serious for a minute, this has always been one of my favorite courses from Super Mario Kart, with its layout being not too challenging, but also not difficult for it to be frustrating. And of course, we can't mention Mario Circuit 2 without talking about its elusive feature, the big jump. Unlike most of the other Super Mario Kart tracks, Mario Circuit 2 also has some significant changes when it was brought back in Mario Kart 7, having a glider section added as well as an optional shortcut utilizing it. This version is retained in Tour, where although it feels off from the controls, 
it still holds up very strong. Hell, even if it's weakest form, Mario Circuit 2 is still a general good time in Super Circuit. In terms of which version I like the most, this image should say enough. It's only held back from how basic it is, considering it's a track from a 30 plus year old game, but regardless, Mario Circuit 2 will remain as one of my favorites from the original, as well as one of my favorite tracks ever. Fight me. Am I getting a sense of deja vu by having this follow after Mario Circuit 2? Who cares, because this track is just... good. That's all you really need to know. Although, actually I lied, there's a bit to talk about. Aren't I a sneaky little monster? 3DS Mario Circuit has always stood out as being a more interesting circuit to me, certainly beats out Toad Circuit in that regard. Between the cherry blossom trees, the quick run through Peach's castle, all down to the gliding section along with the circuit theme playing it is a sensation unlike any other. I will admit though that ever since the release of my ranking every retro track in Mario Kart Tour video, I've slowly liked 3DS Mario Circuit less and less. Not to the point of it being mediocre or bad, but there's clearly better tracks than this one, especially in this department. While this no longer holds the title of being my favorite Mario Circuit, it's still a decently enjoyable track at its very core, it still lands above the top 20. Neat! For it being Peach's first track in the series, this really nails it even by the standards of Mario Kart 64. And yes, I actually acknowledge it as Peach's track. Hey look guys, I actually learned from last time, and that's because I realized it after the video published. That was a bit embarrassing, but anyways, this classic track is by far the best out of the three raceways, with its more difficult turns, a dynamic jump that makes your car crash down and probably destroy its insides, and of course, the elusive Super Mario 64 easter egg. This track has it all in being one of 64's best, but personally speaking, I am more partial to the remake that I got in Mario Kart 8. It just brings in a lot more beauty with the addition of cherry blossom trees and ringing bells as you glide and dodge hot air balloons. Yeah, sure you can't really go to Peach's castle anymore, but I won't dock it points for that alone, so long as the gameplay is good. And I mean, yeah, it is. Tor's version takes heavy emphasis on the 8 model, much like Yoshi Circuit, but it really doesn't hit the same level. I mean, these hills weren't there before, and I don't know if it's just me, but the CPUs are just weirdly aggressive in this track, like, much more than the rest. Is it just me that feels this way? I hope not. Even so, I still enjoyed playing through this version despite its graphics being less. Overall, Royal Raceway still holds as one of Mario Kart's greater tracks. Whether it's the original, HD remake, or a mobile port, you can't really go wrong with a round at Royal Raceway. I have a lot to say about Daisy Circuit, but considering that we're talking about the remakes that it got in both Mario Kart Tour and in the Booster Course Pass, I'll save it for later. As for the remakes themselves, well, on their own, they aren't bad tracks. It's still largely the same track, layout and all, but something about these two versions just doesn't really hit the same vibe that the original had. If I were to compare these two to the original, it's like drinking tap water after drinking filtered water. Both remakes have their own individual issues that ultimately makes me not rank it in the same league as the Wii version. The tour version has some strange changes with the road, and the scenery is notably a bit… off. And the statues. The less said about them, the better. The 8 Deluxe version, however, brought in three changes that leaves me with mixed feelings for each. The glitter is expected, but a neat addition. The ramp after the turn feels extremely out of place, and the boost panels following after feels a bit natural. I suppose the atmosphere is a bit better, but still feels off. And the music. It sounds different. Definitely doesn't beat the original to a T. With how mixed I am with these remakes, despite the overall course being just as good, I think you can understand why I rank them differently enough. Good tracks overall, but man, these changes do not make much of an impression. As someone who's only played very few of the Zelda games in their lifetime, this track ain't too bad I gotta say. In the sea of other Mario Kart 8 tracks, maybe it lands in the middle of the pack, but in this particular instance, I find it to be pretty enjoyable. 
I absolutely love going through Hyrule Castle and trying to open the secret path just to go through the Master Sword. Always feels satisfying every time, and the music is definitely one hell of a banger. I do kind of wish this course got a bit more involved past the castle, especially for how simple the course is in general, but I digress. This is still a really neat circuit trick at the end of the day. Oddly enough, now counting the red trip courses, this is one of the higher circuits ranked on this list that came from Mario Kart 8. Didn't expect that, but cool nonetheless. I guess I wasn't lying when I said this track grew on me the more I played it. I mean, one of the versions managed to crack the top 10. GC and Mario Circuit does sort of fall under the same boat as N64 Mario Raceway in some aspects, but whereas that track doesn't leave me with much feeling, Double Dash's take just feels a little more special. Maybe it's the Mario Sun at the start of the race, or the Blue Shell Lamps, or the Risky End Stretch where one wrong move can cost you the entire race. Whatever it is, I absolutely adore every aspect of it and makes GC and Mario Circuit one of my top favorites. As for versions, I still prefer the original over Wii. I don't know why, but the Wii version just feels a little off for my liking, especially the bumps at the end. Not to say it's a bad remake, because it isn't, I just simply like the flow of Double Dashes better. In any case, we're now at the home stretch for this list. Literally, there's like two courses with three versions coming, so let's not waste any time and go through them. There's several things that comes to mind when you see rain outside. Annoyance, storms, and Luigi's hot lift. This track has always been one of my general favorites ever since I first played it on DS, with its unique raining setting on an airstrip field, fun twists and turns, all accompanied with the GBA circuit theme. It's such a fun course to drive on, and this is one of the very few where I actually like most of, if not all of the versions released since the original. Even the tour version is pretty great, in spite of it being mostly flat with the annoying rain traction. I don't know, it just adds into the atmosphere a lot with the added trees and buildings in the background. The GBA original is also pretty good as well, and a bit more challenging due to the gameplay of Super Circuit. Not that it's a bad thing once you get used to it, of course. The DS version though is by far my favorite, in part due to both its gameplay and the atmosphere being a little darker, which I feel fits appropriately for a rainy setting a bit. All in all, a great series of tracks that offers a fun layout, unique atmosphere, and a blast to play. Guys, we did it. Luigi has truly redeemed himself in this list. Give it up for Luigi! Now this is what I call an unexpected, yet surprising redemption. DS Mario Circuit, much like its GameCube counterpart, has slowly grown on me a bit since the last time I've talked about it. The original has always been one of my top favorites in Mario Kart DS, with its unique hazards of fire piranha plants and some sharp returns near the end. The music also fits here really well, and is what I generally associate more with over figure 8 circuit in all honesty. In spite of how much I endured the original, I have to hand it to the tour developers for turning this track into the best it's ever been. While the track overall feels a little shorter than before, it still retains everything that I liked from the original, on top of adding in a forest section that adds more character to this track. Then we got the 8 Deluxe version, which on top of the improved controls and graphics, also adds in a sleeping wiggler at the forest section that'll wake up either at the final lap or just having a day off at 200cc. I just find that really adorable and it just adds more character to this otherwise pretty amazing circuit. Despite it causing a ton of controversy back when it was revealed, this version of DS Mario Circuit is one of my absolute favorites in the series thus far. And to think I prefer 3DS Mario Circuit over it. <sighs> How time flies. You might be a bit surprised to see this iteration of Yoshi's Circuit alone without the OG. Well, there is a reason for that, but before we get there, let's talk about the remake from Mario Kart 8. I remember vividly seeing this track coming back and being all excited about it, and part of the fact that this is a track getting remade for a second time. Surely, with it no longer being on the DS, it would improve a lot, right? Well, in some instances, yes. This part of the track now allows drivers to go through the flowers, allowing for some unique cuts. The starting area is now a town inhabited by mostly Yoshis. The graphics are extremely good, and of course the rendition of the GameCube circuit theme is just… wow. 
Of course, it's not all smooth sailings, as the shortcut is still absent despite this track being on more powerful hardware, and despite how gorgeous this track looks, I do think it loses a bit of charm that the original had, which is a bit notable with things like the helicopter replacing the Yoshi Copter. But to be fair, I guess you could say that for nearly every 8 retro track. Regardless of its shortcomings, Yoshi's Circuit in Mario Kart 8 is still one of the best remakes I've seen for a circuit track, let alone for Mario Kart 8 proper. But what about the original? Well, the next two tracks on this list are above all the other circuits, as these are what I consider to be the very best. I really wanted these two to be number one, and it wasn't easy deciding which of these two deserved to get the gold medal. But after some consideration and thought? The runner-up for this list is none other than the original Yoshi Circuit. What? I wasn't kidding when I said this was a hard decision on my part, especially when this is at the top two. But I digress, because even though this didn't get the gold medal, I still think it's one of the best circuit tracks in the series, and I know I'm not alone with that. The whole track is in the shape of a Yoshi, and while that's apparent from the last three that we've talked about, this is the original version, so I figured it's best to say it here than its future appearances. Not only does the layout provide a unique, yet fun experience with the many turns it has to offer and product plane hazards, but what this track has that no other does is the charm of it all. From the Yoshi helicopter to the side of Daisy Cruiser, hell, this is the only version where you get to take this shortcut. I don't know if it's actually faster this way, but I appreciate it nonetheless. Couple with the music, and what you end up getting is a track that might look simple on the surface, but it provides a fun experience for all, and I can't help but see just why this track came back three times afterwards. Even still, this is my favorite version of Yoshi Circuit, and that won't change for quite some time. Okay, I guess you can guess the last one now. Am I fully aware that I just placed this track over Yoshi Circuit, which has obstacles, a unique layout, and great music? Yeah, I'm aware, but damn it, I just couldn't help myself. Daisy Circuit in itself is a fairly basic track, even for Star Cup standards. There aren't any obstacles to speak of, unless you want to count these cones for some reason, and the layout isn't as intense or crazy as some of the others like GBA Luigi Circuit or Yoshi Circuit. So, why on earth would I choose Daisy Circuit over the others that are higher up? To be honest, I just really like the atmosphere and overall vibe of this one a lot more. I can certainly appreciate a Mario Kart track that has crazy gimmicks or layout, but I can also appreciate one that takes it easy or simple so long as it has something for me to enjoy, and in Daisy Circuit's case, wow, I words can't describe just how I feel about this one. The atmosphere with the seaside town accompanied with this adorable statue of Daisy and Luigi dancing is one that I really like, and in some instances, I feel as if I'm not playing on a circuit track, instead driving through this coastside and feeling the breeze blow through as you see the orange sunset at full view. The music complements this one so well with this, and is one of my all-time favorites in the Mario Kart series. It really hurts to see that these two remakes just didn't live up to the standards that I expected for Daisy Circuit especially Mario Kart 8's version since its model is based off of tours. But in any regard, the charming and lovely nature of the original Daisy Circuit never fails to make my day just a little better, and therefore makes this track one of my favorite circuit tracks in all of Mario Kart. Well, this was an interesting experience. I sure do hope that people don't take this seriously and start a war in the comments all for a dumb concept I just thought of since last year. In all seriousness, making this list was a very surprising experience, as I had a lot of feelings and thoughts changed over the course of a few months now. Some tracks may have stayed in similar placements, but others have gotten better over time. I wasn't kidding when I said that I had a hard time trying to determine if Yoshi Circuit or Daisy Circuit should take number one. I really do like these two a lot. 
All this aside, I'd still like to thank you all for watching this video. This has been one I've been wanting to remake for quite a while now, and I'm so glad I finally got this out of my chest. I won't be making an updated video for when this next circuit arrives though, as I feel like that could have been a little bit more repetitive. But if for some reason you're interested in seeing that, then consider joining my Discord server down below. In any way, let me know down in the comments below of what your favorite circuit is and how I'm wrong for putting Remix Mario Circuit not in S tier. And as always, remember that Stu cares about you. I am going to lie down in bed now because talking about circuit tracks for about 40 minutes? 40 minutes? Wow, I have no life, huh? <sighs> I gotta rest up now. There's just one other thing I'd like to focus on during the summer. See you guys then.